It's almost six months since we had this last same conversation, but I, I feel like uh, I'll do the introduction and also look for you to tell us how we've moved on. Um, ITM Power has been right at the heart of the hydrogen strategy, and so thank you for joining us, Charles. Charles um, leads uh, ITM Power business all over the world, including Australia, UK, Germany, France, everywhere that we're seeing ITM popping up. And I think it's most exciting that the innovation strategy uh, was opened uh, most recently by Kwasi Kwarteng in your very own offices and uh, in your factory just around the corner in Rotherham. So we're glad to have you here, if not in person. Um, <laughs> but uh, Charles, with that, I would like you to take the stage and I'll put your slides up and let you talk for about 30 minutes or allow as much time as you like for your presentation and questions afterwards. Thank you. Great. No, no, thank you, Paul. No, thanks. So much. And good afternoon, everybody. Um, so, yes, as Paul said, I'm, I'm business development manager for the, the UK and um, I'm a director of the company we set up in Australia in 2018. Um, I, I've been with the company since 2008 um, and uh, fair to say I've, I've seen quite a bit of change in both the company, uh, its, its technology, its products, and of course the demand pull as, as we move forwards with this very exciting arena um, of decarbonisation. Um, and you know it, it is exciting. It's um, there's a, there's all sorts. It's a challenge, and there's all sorts of uh, fears and trepidations as to how we get to net zero. Um, but I feel confident that what we have in ITM is a a, a really viable pathway and a, a key um, component um, to enabling that decarbonisation that we we seek through net zero. So a little bit about ITM, we, we man, we're a manufacturer. We're, we're a vertically integrated manufacturer of permolecularizer systems. Now, what does that mean? So ITM stands for Ion Transfer Materials. Um, it, was, um, it was formed in 2000 and, and listed on London Stock Exchange in 2004. And um, its sole focus is on optimizing the electrochemistry and the performance the durability of electrolyzers it produces that can enable, facilitate the greater penetration of renewable energy on the grid and decarbonize those sectors the electron currents reach. Um, and to make that, those electrolyzers and the hydrogen produced at the lowest cost. Um, so we, we're experts in electrochemistry. We, we develop the, the membrane electrode assembly at the heart of electrolysis. We select the catalysts. We develop the inks to deploy the catalysts on the membranes that we um, that we also um, make, manufacture with, uh, ourselves. So we, we, our understanding is right the way through the product, from the electrochemistry, the smallest um, performance factor, right the way through hydrogen at the end of the nozzle. We we have a the, the, what's now the, the largest hydrogen um, permolecularizer factory in the in the world, um, based less than a mile away from where you are, Paul. Um, and um, it, it's, it, it's got an output of a gigawatt per annum, at full capacity. So at the moment, if anyone wants to make a gigawatt of electrolysis, um, there's only one factory in the world that can make it. And uh, it's, it's an ITM in, in, in Sheffield. Um, so with green hydrogen, we can produce from renewable energy. That is, that is the, the true net zero fuel, there's no carbon involved, no methane emissions in, involved in its um, supply chain. Um, so PEM electrolysis powered by renewables is, is the only viable option we have to decarbonize uh, processes. Uh, and the market's accelerating very, very quickly. And of course, you have government commitments. Um, just to, to give a, a little bit of an idea of our, um, our um, so I'm kind of got the wrong, Slide back here. Hopefully not. Um, just to give you an idea of the um, the, the where we are. Um, so the, we've got a record backlog um, of 300 megawatts. This is announced from results in um, April 21, and um, a, a record tender pipeline of every gigawatt. Um, now it wasn't. I can remember two years ago we we, we were in the same position with the pipeline being 300 um, megawatts. Um, so you know if you can see how quickly things are moving. Um, it's, it's about 90% a year in, in terms of in, increase um, in, in demand and uh, the contract signed. The, the Gigafactory is fully operational um, and we've delivered our first 10 megawatt system to Shell, which you'll see in that picture there um, at the refinery in 
Cologne in Germany. Uh, and that is now operational. And um, that is um, that was opened in Ju- July this year. Uh, Shell have also announced that they, w- with ITM and Linde on the back of this facility, they wish to extend that to a further 100 megawatts. Uh, for, and, and that'll be producing synthetic aviation fuel. So, you know, the the um, expansion is is moving forwards and we've completed front-end engineering designs for the Humber 100 megawatts project based on GigStack and much greater sizes now um, uh, globally, 250 megawatts and 300 um, megawatts. So everything moving very quickly. And it's really the... the it's, it's these, if you look at the macro market and the um, first order reports, the International Energy Agency um, and its forecast for electrolytic hydrogen required by 2050 for this net zero, we're going to need 3,500 gigawatts of electrolysis. Um, at the moment, the, the, the projects have been very much centred in um, Europe uh, and the Aurora report um, has has um, showed about 85% uh, of electrolysis projects are in Europe. That's about 200 gigawatts. Um, but elsewhere, it's just getting going. You know, Australia, the States with their moonshot, um, the, the U.S. Uh, Department of Environment, uh, sorry, Department of Energy, have declared that a, um, a, an earth shot um, as being the first or, or, and the priority of the uh, initiatives being focused on green hydrogen, looking at a dollar uh, per kilogram uh, within a decade. And, and, and that's that type of uh, ambition um, will just stimulate the, the, an enormous amount of demand and um, progress. And here's why, really. I mean, if, if you look at the, the, the opportunity for replacing hydrogen from fossil fuel, it's multi-sector. It's multi-process, and there are enormous markets from ammonia production to methanol, um, your refinery hydrogen. Refineries under the Renewable Energy Directive um, have to decarbonize by and have a renewable content of 14% of renewable energy in their products, um, and that's got to be done urgently. So um, I think 2030 is the, the date for that. So immediately there's an obligation for utilizing renewable energy for that refinery process and so electrolysis is a huge role there if you look at the the other sectors cars and and transport refueling that's that's a an early sexy um sector that um can grab headlines and showcase electrolysis um at an early stage and the role of green hydrogen um, and, and how we can decarbonize those emissions from heavy vehicles where electric um, electricity finds it difficult due to load compromise, et cetera. Um, and then, of course, got heat and um, other, other reducing um, uh, processes, reducing agents um, in semiconductors and steel. At the front end of the electrolyzer um, is, is, of course, how we encompass and increase the penetration of renewable energy on the grid. Um, renewable energy needs storage. Um, the, the beauty about an electrolyzer system is that we take water, we split water into its constituent parts, hydrogen and oxygen, and we can do that rapidly. Um, we can ramp up and down from 20% to 100% in under two seconds. And that enables us to provide a, a rapid demand side load for the grid, enabling renewable energy to be fully utilized whenever the wind blows, um, whatever the um, state of demand during the, the during the, the uh, 24 hour period. Um, and interestingly, if you, if you look at the market for renewable energy, it's traditionally been electrons, which are a short term market. Hydrogen provides renewable energy industry with a long term market, um, with a product that can be stored and utilized for a number of different applications. So it's, it's changing the market um, incentive for deploying renewable energy as much as helping it penetrate the electricity grid and decarbonize our electrons, as well as balancing the grid so, so that we can have a stable um, grid with unscheduled um, renewable energy generation. 
the, the scale up of projects has, from ITM's point of view has been pretty dramatic. Um, we've scaled up 10 times every two years. Uh, and, and what you have on that graph is the uh, 10, 100 kilowatt st uh, stations, um, electrolyzer stations that we deployed in our network for refueling cars, the, the one megawatt with Gazini in, 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 uh, in Holland, uh, the Shell 10 megawatts um, that's just opened um, this year, and the Shell uh, 100 megawatts that's committed for 2023. Um, so you, there's a, a, a rapid scale up, and uh, that's facilitated through a lot of careful planning um, in terms of planning the technology, the, um, the, the, the ability to scale up using low cost components um, and at low risk uh, and um, facilitating um, that production through the, the right automation, semi-automation of equipment uh, in this production process. Um, and in order to house all that, we have a factory. Um, this is the, uh, the Gigawatt factory on Bessemer Park um, in Sheffield. Um, it's the size of two football pitches. It's pretty huge. Um, we've also raised funding last year to um, take the blueprint of this factory and duplicate it elsewhere. So um, we're, we're, we're looking at a very fast-growing market. Um, Including that factory is a hydrogen skills academy and conference facility. Skills, jobs in the hydrogen industry are, are vital. That's vital as equipment. Um, you, you need people to, to understand how to build these facilities um, and to integrate them both with the, on the renewable energy side of things, but also in the gas handling side of things. So that, because there's a, there's a, a, a very easy um, transfer from oil and gas jobs to the new hydrogen industry based around um, electrolysis. Um, and, you know, the, the, we need new graduates to, to start on this exciting journey. Key, key, to, key to addressing market is collaboration, of course. And um, over the years, we, we've, we've established some very solid partnerships, both on the renewable energy side, and, as well as the oil and gas side. Um, so, I, I, if you look at some of those partners on that um, diagram there, the most significant for ITM has been the investment by Linde in 2019 um, and the setting up of a joint venture, ITM Linde Electrolysis. And, and I'll explain a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, SNAM are another um, equity stakeholder um, and they took an investment last year and at the same time committed to 100 megawatts of uh, projects and then we have um, Orsted and Scottish Power um, working Scottish Power in um, on Whiteley in Glasgow on a 20 megawatt uh, electrolyzer system for transport there at the wind farm and um, with, with Orsted working Philip 66 uh, on the Humber um, Gigastack project 100 megawatts um, facility and then it's Sumitomo. Um, so Sumitomo, um, an important partner um, for us in Japan and APAC, and uh, in particular, uh, and um, we've been working very closely with them. With we, 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 ITM is supplying the first electrolyzer to be imported into Japan, um, so it's, it, it's a significant step to have your technology imported into Japan. We're very excited about it. The project will be working with Tokyo Gas, and and we'll be blending hydrogen to the gas network um, in Tokyo. And then, of course, with Shell. Um, the relationship with Shell has been a, a long-standing relationship from a strategic um, siting of our electrolyzers and hydrogen fueling equipment on their forecourts through to the refine and um, the expansion to the next 100 megawatts. But it's a, it's a, it's a joint venture with ITM Sorry, with uh, Lindy Engineering, um, which is really key um, and provides us with a, a capability to provide turnkey uh, the, uh, technology and downstream equipment to optimize green gas solutions. Um, it's a 50 50 joint venture and it, it provides ITM with the, through the joint venture, with the resources of engineering globally. Um, and so 
in any project um, over 10 megawatts, we will be deploying our systems uh, with via ILE, the joint venture, um, which will include all the full engineering, procurement and construction for the facilities, um, as well as the proprietary technologies downstream of the electrolyzer from storage, compression, dispensing in terms of um, vehicles, but also cryogenics, um, ammonia plant, methanol plant, um, you name it uh, in, in, the, in the portfolio, as well as, of course, their, their, their pipelines, et cetera. So it, it's, it's all about turnkey delivery. A manufacturer can't just manufacture equipment and expect to be able to deploy it and sell it. It has to go the whole hog with an EPC as a, a, a very close partner. And w- the, the exclusive arrangements we have with Linja Engineering via this joint venture means we can work closely right away from very early design and deployment of our systems. And these are some of the products we make. Um, so on a small scale up to um, four megawatts, um, we have a plug and play system um, whereby we connect to electricity supply, water supply, um, we have the um, water purification system um, that deionizes the water uh, and then water passes through the, the stacks. The oxygen comes off with the water um, through the settling tank and is vent to atmosphere. The hydrogen is moves to a pure uh, purification um, area in, in the container whereby we, we condense it, we reduce some moisture and we dry it uh, to produce five lines purity fuel cell grade hydrogen. Um, next levels up is between four and 20 megawatts, maybe a, maybe a, a replication of these modules, or it may be a um, modular arrangement whereby we have a more central um, electrolyzer um, area. And then the balance of plants surrounding it. So the water purification, um, the, 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 the um, power electronics uh, and uh, the uh, gas purification side. Um, and that modularization is, is, is key in, 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 uh, in managing the, the capex, but also the integration when you're in um, large facilities such as refineries. For very large um, uh, deployment, so really above 80 megawatts, we'll be deploying our five megawatt stack, which is a giga stack. Um, and, and that is an evolution design from the two megawatt stack. Um, it's using the same low cost components it's, it's not a question of having to reinvent, redesign. It's an evolution. So we've, we, we have a, a, the ability to build on the performance. Um, the electrochemistry that we developed in a two megawatt scale, it, it carried forward to the five megawatt scale. Um, and where we improve the electrochemistry, we can substitute the stacks during the lifetime of the project with latest versions of this technology. So there's an element of future-proofing in, in the, in the, the um, technology that we're, we're deploying. So Lindy, have, um, they are building a 24-megawatt um, facility, which will be open next year, um, which will contain the 2-megawatt stacks. Um, and the, the facility at Lerner is a chemical complex. Um, so the hydrogen will be, um, be substituting some of the SMR um, for the pipeline to provide um, the the hydrogen for the, the um, refinery technologies. Um, some of the hydrogen will also be utilized for uh, and shipped cryogenically for shipping uh, use as well. But the, it's, it's an important step um, for Lindy to learn how to use it to improve it. And it's this iteration that we've had from the very smallest projects all the way up to the largest. You're constantly learning and you're constantly improving. And um, when you've got a, a big engineering partner as part of your delivery, it, it, it's, it's a fantastic way of actually moving forwards very quickly. So in terms of cost, it's, it's not just about the, cop, uh, the CapEx, I should say. It's, it's, it's about the, the deployment of the system and actually how you provide the value engineering to ensure the, you, 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 you uh, are able to optimize the, the, the electrochemistry the, the, through the, the testing technology roadmap that you've developed um, and then deploy it w- with the right amount of automation, et cetera, and, in terms of how it's produced um, to bring down the costs through mass production 
Uh, and then how you operate that, that that piece of kit in terms of the uh, the uh, generation profile from the electrical energy coming in and the demand profile for the hydrogen that's required for processes or other applications. Um, and that management uh, and being able to monitor diagnostics of the, of the equipment and have a thorough understanding and control and um, the degree to forecast performance is, is really key. And that's something uh, we've been able to d- develop over the years and, and for reliability and availability of, of plant for, for customers. So a little bit of a summary of YTM. Well, we've got, I'll, I'll, I'll leave this for you to, to read. I'll, I'll share these slides later, but I've, I've covered most of this. Um, we're, we're in a very strong position. We've raised funds for future growth. We have a new factory. We're capturing the global opportunity and we've got a lot of support um, to, in order to deliver. Um, in, uh, just a couple of things, uh, comments on the hydrogen strategy um, for growth and, and net zero. I say growth and net zero because it is a huge opportunity for growth. Um, it's a good start, what's, what's been um, announced so far. Um, there, are, there are certain aspects that need clarity. Um, the five gigawatt, for instance, what does that mean? Is it electrolyzes? You know, how do you measure five gigawatts of hydrogen? Um, and, and the UK is in the curious position of adopting both blue as well as green in its strategy compared to other, other countries that have gone along the green hydrogen route. Um, so, you know, the issues that will arise, I guess, will be, uh, at what point do we change from one to the other? And, you know, how do we set targets? What does it mean? Um, and that's what we need to establish. I mean, from a, from a green hydrogen perspective, uh, it, it's a perfect way to roll out the hydrogen infrastructure in, incrementally and to decarbonize a step at a time. Um, the technology is mature. Um, the, the, the risks are known. That there's the insurance is there. The, the, the liability is understood um, and the, the scale up is, is, is understood and there's a, a pathway to do that. Uh, and so it's proven and ready now to, to deploy as a net zero solution. Um, so really, you know, in terms of um, the, the, the resources to deploy at scale, we've got ample wind. I've, I've put a picture there of the, the offshore wind industry report um, solving the integration challenge for offshore renewable energy. And you'll see in that there's, there's some forecasts uh, made on the availability of offshore wind and the, the need for hydrogen, green hydrogen production that will support that deployment. Um, and it's, it's, it's very robust. Um, this was produced last year. Um, you've also got, of course, the, the, the forecast for jobs. And uh, these are jobs across the renewables, across the electricity grid operators, across the hydrogen utilization. I mean, it, it's an enormous section of um, in, industrial um, deployment. It, it, the supply chains are enormous. Um, and uh, yes, there are new aspects to the supply chain, but there's an awful lot of transition that, that is possible from existing oil and gas. Um, so, you know, green hydrogen is there as a, as a pretty much a, a no-brainer for uh, transfer of skills. Um, and, of course, this the, the other issue I'd point out was national security, uh, energy security, um, which we're very aware of at the moment, and the opportunity to harness vast amounts of renewable energy for long periods of time in salt caverns for very long-term energy storage to meet the needs that we face today for power regeneration in, in the future. Um, so hopefully that's that's giving you a flavour. Um, if you if you want to find out any more information, um, there's some papers here which we've produced on uh, the electrolyzer deployment market, the, the types of hydrogen, the different colours, um, which we'll go on to in a minute, no doubt, in the panel's discussion, and um, as well as that uh, that report on the um, integration challenge. So thank you very much. Thank you, Charles. I think you've covered a lot of ground in the... 25 minutes there, and there are a number of questions that have been posed, and I wondered if uh, we could throw a couple of the, those at you now. So the um, audience has been uh, interacting, saying, can you scale up and continue to scale up at a rate of 10 times every two years? And if so, what do you see as the challenges that need to be overcome to ensure that we don't plateau that growth? Very good question. Yeah, I, I think there's, there's a number, put it this way, there's a, we're looking at this very carefully um, because 
there, there are a number of constraints, um, but there are also a number of ways to reduce the risk of those constraints um, occurring. Um, so one, one of the common uh, questions is, well, uh, platinum group metals, uh, the ability to, to utilize all these catalysts, where will they come from? Um, and we've had a, a, a very aggressive catalyst reduction program um, to reduce the precious metal content of our uh, MEAs, and uh, we've reduced it by 80% over the last five years. And that was in our last trading um, update. Um, the So we, we, are, we are above, sorry, we're ahead of the EU um, targets on this, um, which were set for 2030 already. Um, and we're, we've got a very um, aggressive program of continual reduction in, in catalysts. Um, and I guess use. that chart comes back to the need for more R&D and spend into that area, which I guess you take from the hydrogen strategy, there's 240 million to invest in innovation. So hopefully that gets deployed in the right areas there too. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's continuous innovation, continuous mm. improvement. And there's plenty of scope for it. I mean, that's the beauty of this technology. We, you're not, you, if this isn't a technology that is, 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 is standing still. It's one that's really just starting to get going. Um, and uh, you know, if you look at Hyundai's announcement for the uh, power density of its fuel cell um, last week, it, it announced it, it, it reached the size and doubled the power density. Yeah. You know, it's, I'm very it's, excited by that for lots of reasons to do with that. Yeah, yeah. But you know, the, the other aspect is recycling and reuse of materials. Yeah. And you've now had the tier one um, industrial players like Bosch, Michelin, coming into the, the, the play, the tier one um, fuel cell components, but, but setting up the, the, the recycling capability for catalysts. So we're, we're looking at a, a very, um, we have an end of life strategy for our stacks in terms of reuse and um, recycling of those materials. Great. And the final question before we have to um, park with other questions and we'll come back to the panel later is given the U.S. and the Department of Energy's target, we heard it from Professor Paul Koshanian of 111, which is $1 per kilo in te- a decade. Can you comment on the cost reduction ITM has achieved uh, in PEM as, a, as the scale has increased? I guess you've partly answered that. Yeah, but I mean, I mean the, the, we've... We are looking at um, just under 500 um, uh, euros per megawatt by mid 2020s, which is a, a drastic reduction. We've that's a over uh, fifth, um, yeah over 50 percent reduction, um, if not 75 percent reduction since 2018. So um, you know we we as I said, that's one just one component of deploying an electrolyzer. It's the value engineering you can bring yes. to deliver a complete solution, which is key. It's got to have a business case. It's got to stand up. And that's what the focus of our ITM Linda Electrolysis is in delivering global green gas solutions. Well, that's perfectly leading into a conversation we're about to have with Proteum Solutions and Green Solutions um, with Jennifer Baxter. So we look forward to seeing you at the panel. And hopefully, Charles, uh, all the technology continues to work. But Thank you very much for a fantastic presentation and see you in in a few moments. Great. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, everyone.